Hello friends. Today, Snuggles and myself will be sharing a story with you called Ramadan. What if you stopped eating and drinking during the day for a month? Written by Farah Kanani and illustrated by Laura Diab. Willing to be hungry? Why? Can you refrain from eating and drinking for more than 10 hours? It sounds hard, doesn't it? Every year, Muslims all over the world don't eat or drink from dawn to dusk for 29 days. By the time they reach puberty, Muslim boys and girls know that it is time for them to join the world of the adults in their community and start practicing this annual ritual. Fasting is considered to be one of the most important pillars of the religion of Islam. Religious fasting takes place during the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar. The Islamic calendar is based on the cycle of the moon, so the 29 days of Ramadan shift 11 days each year. Therefore, the month of Ramadan can coincide with summer one year and with fall some years later. People who fast need to be healthy. Sick people are not required to fast. Pregnant women and people who are traveling don't have to fast either. However, they have to make up for the days they missed before the following Ramadan comes around. Many poor families experience hunger every day. When Muslims fast, they think about those poor people and can relate to them and to their distress. But Ramadan is not only about fasting. What is Ramadan? In addition to fasting from dawn to sunset, Ramadan is mostly about spirituality, family togetherness, and compassion. Charity is an essential part of this Muslim holy month, and it is not uncommon to see families providing their needy neighbors with dinner and breakfast food throughout the whole month of Ramadan. Zakat al-Fitr is a special charity that Muslims are required to give near the end of the month of Ramadan in order to put some happiness into the usually tough days of needy people. It is a sin for a Muslim family not to distribute zakat al-fitr before the end of the last day of Ramadan, unless something major prevents the head of the family from doing so. Although bad behaviors are to be avoided the whole year long, it is a requirement for those who fast to be on their best behavior during Ramadan. In Islamic schools, Children are reminded to be helpful to each other and not to tease or bully each other or whine about homework. Why is Ramadan sacred? Muslims believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, the prophet of Islam, received a divine revelation one night during the month of Ramadan. He was 40 years old and was meditating in a cave called Hira near Mecca, Saudi Arabia. To this day, practicing Muslims visit this cave whenever they go to Mecca for the pilgrimage or Hajj, which is the fifth pillar of Islam. Nobody knows for sure the exact day of the revelation, but according to Muslim scholars, the date was an odd number. In order to unify the celebration of this special night, most Muslim countries agreed to commemorate it every 27th day of Ramadan. This night is called Layla Tukadr, or the Night of Destiny, and it is the night all Muslims wait for to ask God to fulfill their dreams. Muslims believe that the sky's doors are open to heaven that night, which guarantees their prayers will be granted. Yummy food to come! The long hours of the day can make the fasting experience difficult, especially if you are fasting for the first time. You may feel very hungry and not have much energy, but the thought of a delicious meal waiting for you after sunset will definitely help you resist temptation. Sometimes you feel so hungry that you think you will need to eat 10 donuts, 20 pancakes, and 8 plates of mac and cheese to recuperate. When it's time to break the fast, you realize that a medium cup of milk and 3 dates can make you feel almost full. Fresh dates and milk are a staple during Ramadan. Usually, it is the first meal a fasting person eats during iftar, which is the food eaten immediately after sunset to break the fast. 
and for many people, it is also the only meal they have at the Sahur, a light meal usually eaten one hour before dawn. Dates, called the desert candy, are naturally sweet and allow the body to gently recuperate its blood sugar level. In some parts of Asia and North Africa, dates are considered to be the best remedies against fatigue and weakness. At Tarawih. Although it is more comfortable to break the fast at home, many Muslims prefer going to the mosque just before sunset. Once they hear the Adhan prayer call announcing the end of the fasting period, they break their fast with dates and milk generously provided by volunteers and pray the Maghrib prayer. Afterward, they join the crowd at the mosque to share a bountiful dinner prepared nightly by volunteers. After dinner, they perform the last mandatory prayer of the day, the Isha prayer, and get ready for long prayers called At-Tarawih. At-Tarawih prayers are long and optional. Nevertheless, Muslims in the United States crowd into mosques more than at any other time during the year to perform these prayers. Muslim families make it a point to solemnly meditate on the long verses of the Quran recited during a tarawih. By the end of the month, families who attended these prayers on a daily basis have read the entire Quran. Khatam al-Quran, or closing the Quran, is the ultimate goal of every Muslim strives to achieve by the end of Ramadan. Attending a tarawih can be overwhelming for young children and every mosque provides a place where they can rest and quietly wait until the adults finish their prayers. Layla Tul Qadr. I like the way American Muslims celebrate this night, which by the way differs depending on their home countries. In the Moroccan community, for instance, women wear their nicest traditional clothes and put dark kahul powder around their eyes. They also cover their hair with long scarves and go to the mosque to spend the whole night praying to God and praising him. Men usually wear a loose white robe with a baggy hood at the back, called a jolaba. They wear perfume and yellow bulgas, traditional Moroccan goatskin slippers, and go to the mosque a few minutes before iftar, the breaking of the fast. But no matter which state you are in, and no matter which community you are from, Layla Tulkadr fills the air with a spiritual and inspiring ambiance. The mosques fill up very early, and the late arriving people have no choice but to pray outside, regardless of the weather. It happened once to me. My family was late, and we couldn't find any covered spot. Hence, we all had to pray in the illuminated street neighboring the big mosque we used to attend. It was drizzling, but frankly, I was very happy to be part of that huge overflowing multiracial crowd, especially since it is believed that the larger the gathering, the bigger chance you have to see your wishes granted. I was 13 then and had a long list of wishes to God. So my day, please. I was seven years old when I first asked my parents to allow me to fast. You are too young, my father said. You'll be very tired and you may faint. My mother knew I would never take no for an answer. So she let me fast from 8 a.m. until noon one day and from noon until 6 p.m. the following day. She then convinced me that she had a power that allowed her to sew the half days together to make them into a haul day. I remember how firm I was about refusing to put anything in my mouth until I heard the call to prayer. It begins with Allahu Akbar, which means God is great, and announces the end of the fasting period for that day. The iftar of what I assumed was my first fasting day was very special. The table held different delectable dishes. Family members broke the fast with me and congratulated me for my incredible act of bravura. 
I later learned that what my mother had told me about sowing the days was a trick that many parents use to avoid having their kids hungry the whole day. I always smile when I remember that day, sitting among grown-ups, feeling so proud to be one of them. Eid al-Fitr. The day after the last day of Ramadan is called Eid al-Fitr, which means literally the celebration of the break fast. In the morning, families gather around a simple breakfast to indicate the end of the fasting period. They then go to public gatherings where Salat al-Eid, the prayer of the festivity, is performed with Muslims from different communities. After a religious sermon by the Imam and a short congregational prayer, the crowd disperses to head back home where other celebrations are yet to be performed. In neighborhoods with a large Muslim community, the doors of the houses usually remain wide open to welcome visiting family members and neighbors who stop by to catch up on each other's news and share tasty traditional food. Non-Muslim friends are usually invited to share the festive mood and the family-oriented gatherings. Here in the United States, schools allow students to miss classes for religious reasons. Therefore, most Muslim American kids take part of the festivities of this joyous day. They usually wear new clothes and receive special allowance from each adult in the house to spend on toys and candy. So, would you be ready for a fasting experience or would you rather get two half days sewn together? Fasting is not only a religious ritual for Muslims. Jews, Christians, Buddhists, and Hindus fast too for different holy celebrations. Spiritual fasting is also a Native American practice. Islamic calendar, Muharram, Safar, Rabi al-Awwal, Rabi al-Thani, Jumad al-Ula, Jumad al-Thani, Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qada, Dhul Hijjah. The Islamic calendar is based on the lunar cycle, the phases of the moon. The end. Thank you for sharing today's read aloud with Snuggles and myself.